It's so wonderful to be in the company of you three formidable females. I'm just I'm so excited. <laughs> mm, yeah. I'm like, um, I just spent the last eight hours with you too. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, super fun. Um, but I know my time with you is limited and I'm going to just jump right in. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I'm going to start with you, Ruth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Think about your son Anthony's pursuit of marriage and, and how does your character, his mother, intervene to really support him in that journey and finding a love match? Uh, I she, She's always trying to encourage him to go basically on dates with women so that they can at least start to kind of navigate whether they have any interests together whether there's any spark or anything like that and he's he's so determined to be on the path that he wants that I I realize that I have to navigate around it and uh, you know Edwina Edwina is a wonderful woman but I see in him that he uh that he isn't overjoyed at the idea and I I need to navigate him into embracing the idea of letting go and perhaps loving, really. It's quite a tricky one. Yes, it is. You play, and you play it so beautifully. There's so much poignancy in your character and restraint and just like all of the delicious things. <laughs> and um, Lady Danbury, Ajoa, what a beautiful performance. And so you are essentially uh, Kate's mentor. Could you talk a little bit about working with Simone Ashley as a new character on the show? What was the yeah. highlight? Oh, well, she's hell. She's so <laughs> she's she's absolutely gorgeous um, so uh, well I, I think well a, a silly highlight is that we both have dogs and she gave me some special things for dogs and I love her forever um uh, um she is a uh, super accomplished super quick uh she's a terrible giggler or oh, there's a lot of us who are gig giggles on the show so, I feel so sorry for the directors because once somebody goes everybody goes and then the, it's ruined but I, I I think um uh, it was lovely working with Simone because she's new and you don't and and uh, you know everybody has to find their feet and everything she hit the ground running and she's generous and open and quick and smart and funny and thoughtful and so you know Lady Danbury and and, and Kate have those moments where I think Lady Danbury sees a lot of herself in Kate in that I, I have to take responsibility. I have to be in charge. It has to be like this. And it's going, you know, and, and I'm going to do it like this. And I, and I think sometimes Lady Danbury wants to go, I completely agree with the goal, but we just have to think, we just have to think about the methodology here, Kate, just cool your jets, baby. Just don't blow hot the whole time. You know, so I, I think she loves Kate and I think she, she really feels for her and she, you know that woman who's like I'm, I'm gonna do it like this and it doesn't matter what I think about anything or what I feel about anything I have to do this thing and I and I think she doesn't want her to be all self-sacrificing I think she wants her to love herself and value herself and understand that her own heart and her own values and her own desires have to be a part of her life too or she's gonna have a sad life and she, she doesn't want that for Kate. Oh my gosh, that's so beautifully said. We all need a Lady Danbury in our lives. I, do. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, actually, I could use a Lady Danbury. We um, have Adua. <laughs> you we can have, I have them. Oh, I have them. Oh, oh, you're very lucky. That's, I mean, incredible. Um, so, Golda, on to you. How empowering is it playing the queen? And I understand you have some royal connections in your family as well. Did, did I get that right? Uh, it is incorrect, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, it is a piece of information that people have taken and run with. Um, I, I, I have no royal connection other than my mother had dinner with Princess Margaret. Okay, that works. As close as I get to our, our, our royal family. <laughs> Closer than part. most. And, and how was it playing the queen? Is, is it a, I can only imagine how empowering it is to be in that role. Can you speak to that a little bit? I think it's empowering to, you know, be in a character that is well-rounded, that is, you know, the showrunners, uh, Chris Van Dusen and Shonda Rhimes saw something in this histor historical character um, that, you know, they wanted to put into this uh, this world, this Bridgerton world, this this fantasy drama to you know push the boundaries to open up um, a world where 
there is diversity, where there is inclusion, where there is a reflection of the world that we live in, where black and brown artists can be celebrated in all their glory. Um, uh, privately, humanity, um, yeah, and pomp and circumstance. So yes, it, it, I'm very thrilled to be yeah, flying the flag. Yes, well, um, as a woman of color, I can tell you it is tremendously impactful and meaningful and brilliant to this show entirely and your portrayal. So thank, thank you so you. much for it. Truly, thank truly. So um, yes, big, very meaningful. Um, so the costumes, let's get a little flights of fancy. The queen especially, I mean, you all have such incredible costumes. I drool over them, but the queen especially so. Um, and then Golda, forgive me, but you did say once upon a time that you had a, we're in a relationship with your wigs. Can you speak to that a little bit? Uh, yes. <laughs> they are all my children. Uh, I love them all equally. But this season is is really important because I've uh, I, I got the chance to collaborate with the hair and makeup department. Um, so you will definitely see uh, the works of art that we know and love. But to be able to collaborate and be able to uh, talk about the kind of logistics of wearing them you know, for a long period of, of, uh, of a day shoot. And to be able to uh, discuss with hair and makeup the different materials that we could possibly use to be, to be able to help me do my job. Do you know what I mean? To be able to help me um, get through a day's filming. So yeah, that was, that was really cool. Um, we have we have a structure. We have um, we have to stay in the kind of Georgian uh, outer frame, the Georgian kind of design. But within that, uh, they give us a, a lot of uh, leeway to be very very imaginative. Um, so that that's where the creative with creative creativity is and the artistry is. I love it. Well, I'm going to flash some images for you now, Golda, because I know we're going to, because I would just love to if you could speak to a little bit. For example, this wig. How heavy was it? <laughs> which one? Which is that? Heavens! I mean, can I see oh, that? No. Oh, can that's you... that one. Um, Only having tea. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's having it's tea. Very yeah. large wig. <laughs> yeah. So, so this uh, lends itself to what I was talking about about the materials that are, are used. That actually wasn't that heavy. Um, it's oh. quite a light one, although it looks as quite, uh, or it looks it looks as though it is. Um, and that was one that we, I think, I can't remember what the material is, but it's more of a plastic rather than a metal that the cages are, are designed in. So yeah, it's, it's very deceptive, that one, because it, it's not actually that heavy. Right. I think I'm out of time, but but just very quickly, I understand there might be a spin-off series for Queen Charlotte. Any any scoop on that? Yes, uh, yes, there is, and we're all going to be in it. So you'll see a young Lady Danbury, a young Violet, and a young Queen Charlotte. It's written by Shonda Rhimes, and uh, yeah, watch this space. We're looking forward to doing it. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Ajoa, Golda, Ruth. You're also brilliant. Such a wonderful morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.